everyone it's the christmas season how many of you are excited that christmas is right around the corner how many of you like receiving gifts well i have a gift here with me today inside this gift is an amazing truth that can make this christmas extra ordinary before we rip it open, first let's read the gift tag. It says, God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Wow! What does extraordinary mean? Extraordinary means something out of the ordinary or more than ordinary not normal or boring how many of you want this christmas to be extraordinary we'll learn more about it in today's service are you ready and excited to worship god and learn more what happened that first christmas so let's pray and continue with our service Let us pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for this day. Lord, we praise you that you are our Savior, you are our um, King, you are our Good Shepherd, and you are our Master. Lord, we have seen in the Bible that you used uh, ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Lord, uh, as you used um, Mary and Joseph to bring the Savior into this world. Lord, I pray that you would use each one of us to, uh, to do extraordinary things, supernatural things for your kingdom and for your glory. Lord, I submit this service into your loving hands. Lord, I pray that uh, fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to learn about you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Father God, for this time. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christmas to me means a lot of fun. It means decorating the tree, making cookies and cake, and singing carols, and most importantly, spending time with my family, and enjoying the life that Jesus came to give me. What Christmas means to me? Christmas to me is all about gifts. Receiving the greatest gift of God, that is Jesus our Savior. I love receiving gifts. But now I understand that giving is more important than receiving. Christmas to me is also about decorating our home, putting up the Christmas tree, setting up the manger. But more than that is making my heart beautiful so that Jesus can be born in me. Christmas is the occasion where we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It is also the occasion where we decorate our houses with Christmas trees, stars, stockings and gifts. We all love gifts. But do you know what is the greatest gift of all? Yes, it is the birth of our Savior and Redeemer, King of Kings, Jesus Christ, who came on the earth to die for our sins. Sin separated man from God. But for God loved the world so much that he gave his beloved son to die on the cross that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So let us celebrate this occasion by thanking God for the most wonderful gift he has given to us. Yay! It's Christmas time again! Isn't it so much fun during Christmas? The plum cakes, cookies, yum, decorations, caroling, etc. But in the midst of all this fun, there are few important things which comes to mind. Christmas is a time to remember God's amazing gift to us. Father God loved you and me so much that he gave his one and only son 
Jesus to die for us so that we who believe in him might get eternal life. Jesus, our Savior, was born in this world to die in our place as a punishment for our sins so that we could be set free from the hold of the devil and be reconciled to Father God. Christmas also reminds me that I need to share the good news of the gospel to everyone so that all might be saved. Last week, we learned about the significance of the Christmas tree and how it portrays some of the characteristics of God. Now tell me, what happened after you put up the Christmas tree? What do we do next? That's right, we decorate it with ornaments. Yes, we are going to decorate our tree and put lights. Yes, this is my favorite part of Christmas, putting up the Christmas tree. Who came up with this idea of decorating tree? Do the decorations have any spe specific meaning? Or are they just hung on the tree to make it look good? Well, not everything has a special meaning. Does it stop overthinking? It's a good thing to think about it, Maria. It's good to think about why we do things and learn from it. So, Mama, are you saying there's a special meaning to eat or the meal we put on the Christmas tree? Please tell me. I'm waiting to hear about this. Well, let's see. People love to decorate their tree with lovely ornaments. They look for the perfect ornament to fit their tree. Ornaments can symbolize blessings. Just as each ornament is a different shape and size, God's blessings are different. And God picks and chooses the blessings that is perfect for us. I knew it. I knew there was something special about the ornaments. But wait. Does that mean we can hang anything on the tree that symbolizes blessings? Yes, why not? You can write your blessings and put them up on the tree. Mama, no, I've written down my blessings on a sheet of paper and I would like to hang it up on the tree. Me too! Sure! Go ahead! The next time you decorate your Christmas tree, why don't you think of a blessing for each ornament that you put up? I'm sure you'll run all of ornaments because you have so many blessings. Look, look, so many blessings. Yeah, so many. Children, why don't you do just what we did? Why don't you write down the blessings and decorate your tree? While putting up every ornament, think of one blessing that it signifies. It's going to be fun and you're going to see how much God has blessed you. Good morning everybody. Praise God. Hope you are all doing well children. Today we've gathered together to worship the Lord. And as we all know, this is the Christmas season. This is the time when our Lord Jesus was born to the earth. This morning, we can hear the Holy Spirit call us, calling all the faithful to come together and to adore Him, to come together and worship Him. Shall we all join together and worship Him and adore Christ the newborn King? Let's raise our voices and sing with all our hearts this morning. Shall we? All right, here we go. Oh, come all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. Oh, come, oh, come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, for no king of angels. Oh, come. Oh, come let us adore. 
tells us that he came to this world to save sinners. Now, he also asks us to go and tell the others that he is born, to shout it out from the mountains, to proclaim to the ends of the earth that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain. One, two, three, four. I sought both night and day. I sought the Lord to help me. And He showed me the way. Yes, when I was a seeker, I sought both night and day. I asked the Lord to help me. And He showed me the way. God so loved the world that He gave us His only begotten Son that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Oh 
God sent an angel named Gabriel to a town called Nazareth. Angel went to visit a young virgin named Mary. She was engaged to be married to Joseph, a descendant of King David. The angel said to Mary, "Rejoice, you have found favor with God. He is with you." Mary was very puzzled and afraid. Why would God find favor with her? She hasn't done anything special. The angel said, "Do not be afraid." Then he told Mary that she was going to have a very special and unique baby and will name the baby Jesus, which means the Lord saves. The angel explained that the baby would be great. He would be God's son. He would even be a king. The king God had promised would come. Mary asked the angel, "How can that happen?" I am not married yet. The angel replied, "God would be the father of the baby. The baby would be God's son." Then he told Mary, "Nothing would be impossible with God." He said that Mary's relative Elizabeth was going to have a baby even though she was old and did not have any children. Mary replied, "Me everything happened just as you said." Then the angel left her. Mary hurried to her relative Elizabeth's house. When she arrived, the baby inside of Elizabeth leaped for joy. The Holy Spirit filled Elizabeth and she said, "What an honor, Mary. Your baby will be blessed too." Mary was so happy. She praised God with songs about how great God is. God was keeping his promise to bless the whole world through Jesus. Now Joseph found out that Mary was going to have a baby and Joseph and Mary were not married yet. Joseph decided to quietly break his engagement with Mary. 
so that she will not be put to shame by others soon after joseph thought these things an angel appeared to him in a dream joseph the angel said don't be afraid to take mary as your wife because the baby she is carrying was put there by the holy spirit mary is going to have a son name him jesus because he is going to save his people from their sins this happened just like the prophet said it would the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son and will name him emmanuel which means god with us when joseph woke up he did exactly as the angel commanded he took mary as his wife while she was still pregnant with the son of god So Joseph and Mary trusted in God and the two followed the plan God had given them to help bring the savior to the world. Wow, children, don't you think that two simple people Mary and Joseph had an extraordinary experience? You don't have to be rich, famous or brilliant for God to use you. Luke chapter 1 verse 26 to 27 In the 6th month of Elizabeth's pregnancy God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph a descendant of David the virgin's name was Mary we are told very little about either Mary or Joseph in this passage we only know that they were to be married of all the jewish men and women of all time god chose mary and joseph to be the earthly parents of his son these were humble ordinary people who must have had an extraordinary relationship with god god could have chosen someone famous someone very important or someone rich to bring his son into this world but he did it instead god chose an unknown young woman who was willing to obey and to do what god had planned for her to do god knew mary would be a wonderful mother for jesus and that joseph would be a great earthly father god didn't care how famous or important Mary and Joseph then because God uses ordinary people but the interesting thing was that they were obedient and willing to do be used by God in whatever way he saw best for them and God used them in an extraordinary way Jesus was born on earth so that any ordinary person could become a child of God and have a strong relationship with him Oh, remember this? Let's see what inside our gift today. It's just a plain old paintbrush. Today we are talking about God doing extraordinary things. So I guess I was expecting something a little more extraordinary in our gift box. What are paintbrushes used for? Let me show you few paintings that were made using plain old paint brushes like this one. The first painting is of Mona Lisa by Leonardo da Vinci. And the second painting Starry Night by Vincent van Gogh. Children, do you know who these paintings are really amazing? They are even considered to be masterpieces. Does anyone know what that means? A masterpiece is an extraordinary painting. What's interesting that all those masterpieces were created with an ordinary paintbrush like this. But in the hands of a talented artist, that ordinary brush can be used to create a masterpiece. How many of you know who created the universe and everything in it? God wants all of us to know that even though we may be ordinary, He can make 
something extraordinary out of our lives. For that to happen, we need to learn to be more like Mary and Joseph. Humble, obedient, ready and willing to do what God wants us to do. Did you know what Mary said to the angel when he told her she was going to be Jesus' mother? Luke chapter 1 verse 38 I am the Lord's servant. Mary answered, May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Have you asked Jesus to be the Lord and Savior of your life? Have you ever told God you would be obedient, willing to do what he asks you to do and follow him where he leads you? If you have, be prepared for God to do something extraordinary with your life. Because God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things. Philippians 4 and verse 13 is a powerful Bible verse. Can we all read it together? Ready? Begin. Philippians 4, 13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Right. That means when we put our trust in Jesus, he will give us the power to do extraordinary things for God. Is there anything too hard for Christ to do? Jesus loves ordinary me and ordinary you. Hi everyone. So we've already heard how God chose Mary to be the mother of Jesus. But how did Mary react to the news? In Luke chapter 1 verse 28 and 29 we read, Mary is confused about why God has chosen her and what the angel's message might mean. Mary might have felt too young or unimportant for such a special task. Remember. God uses ordinary people and his choices are often surprising. Let's find out why. 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 7 The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord look at the heart. Children, tell me, what ideas does this verse give you about why God chose Mary? Mary was an ordinary girl, but God knew her heart. God can use anyone whose heart is right. We can do what is right only when? Yes, when we have Jesus in our heart. And like Mary, children, God wants to use each one of us. We may wonder, why would God want to use us? We may feel shy or we may not feel comfortable. We may feel nervous or scared about doing something. But if we are willing, God can use us in amazing ways. We know that God uses ordinary people, people like you and me. Now let's explore how God might use ordinary people like you and me in his plans. I have here a plain ordinary person cut out. This ordinary person represents you and me. There you are, an ordinary person in the middle of an interesting world. Now let's add some features to make this ordinary person look a lot like you and me. Some cool top, pants, cool hair, give it some eye, an eye, and a nice big smile. Children, from the minute God made you, you were anything but just ordinary. God had plans for the way you would look, the way you act, feel, think, talk, and interact with others. God made every aspect of you, but God has even better plans for you than just the way you look, your thoughts and feelings. God wants to use you to do extraordinary things for him, to encourage others, to help other Christians go close to Jesus, to help people who don't know Jesus have a relationship with him. 
Now can we close our eyes and thank God for all of his blessings for creating us and choosing us to do his extraordinary plans and works. Please repeat this prayer after me children. Dear God, thank you for all the blessings. You have blessed me with so much that I cannot even count them. Thank you for creating me to do extraordinary works and plans. Help me to be like Mary and Joseph, humble, obedient and willing to trust and follow you. We want our lives to be extraordinary, Jesus. And we want our Christmas to be extraordinary too. And that will be only possible if we look to you for direction and strength. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Children, I'm sure you all are already excited and ready with your gifts, your four items at home, already making a list of what to do for Christmas. But are you one of those children who thought that Christmas was all about fun and celebrating with gifts and having fun? I'm sure it was changed today, right? This thought of yours. Yes, Christmas is all about Jesus. And the most important gift that you will receive is not going to be under your Christmas tree. It is going to be from God himself. Yes, God can change our very ordinary life into something extraordinary. He can use us for his extraordinary purposes. How do we go from living an ordinary life to living an extraordinary life for God? Have you ever thought about it? Here are some of the ways that God can use you to take your, from taking your life from ordinary to extraordinary. First thing, you can share about our special Christmas Kids online service with a non-Christian friend of yours and invite them to watch our service. Number two, you have learned about the significance of the Christmas tree, the ornament, so many new things about Christmas. People are going to be curious, especially your friends might come and ask you about Christmas. Share whatever you learned in the online service with your friends. Number three, remember to always count your blessings. As you're putting on ornaments on your Christmas tree, I would say count every blessing that God has blessed you with, everything that he's given you with and put that ornament, one ornament per blessing. I'm sure you will soon run out of ornaments but not blessings. Number four, yes, you have to encourage your friends. God has not given us friends and placed people in our life just so that we can have fun with them, is it? No, he wants us to encourage them. Remember, any time a family member or a friend came and encouraged us, the ordinary feeling in us just left and we felt special. And God wants us to give this gift to our friends. Just like how God used Elizabeth to encourage Mary, God wants you all to go out there and speak to your friends and encourage them and make them feel special this Christmas season. So children, would you promise to do all these things this Christmas season? You have the entire month. Share about Jesus, share about Christmas, share about everything you're learning. And of course, don't forget to make your friends feel special. If you have any interesting story about the way you've shared and would like us to know about it, write them to us. Children, before we close this service, let us pray for the missionaries who are ordinary people but doing extraordinary work for God. Missionaries are people who preach and share about Jesus to many people so that they are saved from their sins. Even as we pray for them, please believe in your heart that God will answer our prayer. As I read out each prayer point, I want you to pray quietly or loudly wherever you are 
and then after a minute i will lead you out in prayer let us pray for missionaries who are in a very difficult situation without proper house and food pray that they will enjoy god's blessings and good health thank you lord for giving us this time for putting missionaries into your hand and their work lord when they are leaving their house and coming to a lonely place to spread your word be with them so that they no, they do not lack anything give them proper house and food as your word says that my god will supply every need according to his riches we declare it in your name that they will get proper food and life and uh, housing so that they can spend a good life there you give them your peace your strength in your holy name we pray in let us take a minute and pray quietly or loudly for missionaries who are separated for from their children for the sake of sharing the gospel pray for god's peace joy and strength to fill their hearts A God is our refuge and strength a very present help in trouble God we put specially missionaries at this time in your hand lord when they have left their families and their children give them your peace your comfort as your word says do not be afraid or discouraged as i am always with you wherever you go lord we put them in your hand so that they are safe and secure and they do not get dismayed in your mighty name we pray amen the last prayer point is we pray for the safety of missionaries as they face persecution pray for wisdom and strength to deal with every situation pray that their faith and hope in god will grow even in every situation psalm 23 four says even though i walk through the darkest valley i shall fear no evil for you are with me dear lord we pray for those missionaries who are facing persecution and they are giving their life for spreading your word lord you be with them you give them your protection and give them strength so that they can face any situation and they shall fear no evil we claim in the mighty name of jesus amen i hope you enjoyed today's online service and we would love to hear from you why don't you go ahead and type in your comments in the live chat section or send us an email to kidsonline@apcwo.org now before we close is anyone's birthday coming up this week Why don't you type in your name, age and date of birth in the live chat section so we as a team can wish you and pray for you. Let us pray and close. Father God, we thank and praise you for this time of learning and worship we had today. 
we pray that you will help us remember all that we learned today and to seek your guidance to follow it every day in our lives. We pray, Lord, that we will always look to you as our best friend and also seek your guidance as your presence goes with us wherever we go. Lead us, guide us and protect us in the coming week and always. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Okay, children. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye. Bye, children. See you next Sunday. Have a good week. Thank you.